Hi and welcome. I'm Jennifer Britton and I am the author of Effective Virtual Conversations and Plan D Track, as well as the creator of the Remote Team Builders program. Today's community call is called Remote Team Boosters and it's interesting. I set this many months ago. It's September 21st, 2020. I want to welcome you if this is the first time we've met. Nice to meet you. You may have found me through multiple different pathways. I am the co-host of the Remote Pathways podcast which really indicates just how many different ways that we can really be available in the remote space. So you might have met me through my 2017 book, Effective Virtual Conversations. Maybe you met me through the podcast over at remotepathways.com, or perhaps you met me recently as part of a five-day challenge with the Stand Out Virtually uh, Challenge. Today's call really is gonna take us deeper into several areas. I wanna share with you three remote team boosters to help you do your best work as a team, whether you are supporting teams, a team leader, or a member of a remote team. There are several levers that we have available to us, which I described earlier this year in my remote working white paper called Remote Enablers. I also wanna share with you some recent frameworks that I've been talking about over at the Remote Pathways community called the Layers of Remote Work. And we're also going to touch on different virtual co-working opportunities. So we are now well into month six of remote work. Many teams are not going to be back together anytime soon. And that's why I felt that it was going to be important to talk about this notion of remote team boosters. So especially if you cannot get together, what are the things that you can do? Well, for more on this topic, I hope you'll join me over at my new Facebook group. It's called the Virtual and Remote Visionaries Hub, the Virtual and Remote Visionaries Hub. And that's where I am hosting my different challenges as well as ongoing conversation. Of course, you can find me over at LinkedIn as well. And really, I think key to this is like sharing best practice with others really fun to bring together people in the month of August for the Standout Virtually Challenge. I will be doing another one in early October, so do stay tuned. Those announcements will go out through the newsletter. You can sign up for the Standout Virtually newsletter or also the Virtual and Remote Visionaries Hub. Common questions I've received in not only the last six months, but over the last three decades, because I've worked remote for a long, long time now is, what do remote teams need? And this is actually a question that I described uh, the answer to in the remote working white paper I released back in March. So we're gonna go into those six areas, which I call the remote team enablers. We're also gonna get you thinking about what will help your teams thrive. And if you've read Effective Virtual Conversations, definitely take a look at chapters 10 and 11, which is all about virtual team leadership development. That's chapter 10. And then chapter 11 is all about virtual team development. As Doug Floyd wrote, you don't get in harmony when everybody sings the same note. So helping teams thrive, part science, part research, part like just helping people connect in. And I think one of the biggest common challenges right now that remote teams are facing is the nature that you know we're meeting, but it may not be effective, or maybe we're not meeting at all. These, in fact, were questions that I started incorporating in the, you might have noticed this, into the Remote Team Builders course. And I hope that you will check that out. We go into different ways that we can be working with some of these remote enablers. So again, new framework in my writing, seven things that we could be really using as different levers for remote work. Communication, connection, collaboration, clarity, consistency, community. Each one of these is a, light, a little bit different, yet each one of these has an amazing impact on how it can help us get work done. Now, we know that teams that thrive also have great relationships as well as clear results. And so coming up over at the Plan Do Track blog, you'll see more on communication. I also have written more about clarity in recent weeks around clarity of expectations, clarity of communication, clarity of where you're going. Part of what people enjoy when they come and join me for Virtual Facilitation Essentials is a notion that we can work together on a roadmap and that roadmap will create clarity. So think about what you're doing to build out all of these different things, including things like connection and culture and community. 
We are all hungry to be part of a larger community. What we can do is really be there to help people collaborate, etc. So for more on this, again, I launched the Remote Team Builders Program. You'll find it over at teams365.teachable.com or 365. It's really called, I call it the Teams 365 Teachable site. And um, in it, I go into several different areas. It's a part one right now, very short, one hour course, micro modules, where we look at the seven C's, the remote enablers in depth, I provide you with a couple of openers you might want to use, as well as a couple of exercises to start creating connection. We then move into goals because part of the challenge of remote work right now is what happens if you do not have aligned goals. And we also know that it's really critical that we help people leverage and lean into their strengths. So how are we helping them revisit and review their strengths? So that when people come together and might not be aware of like who's who, we can collaborate more quickly. We can say, here's a strength of mine. I'm good at seeing big picture. I'm good at helping connect the dots. And I might be really well paired with someone who is say, more micro in focus, is good at the details. If we work separately, we might miss that hole, but together we can really create that connected, integrated 360. So another piece of this whole remote team builders is helping people understand their styles. What are their approaches? What is their impact? And how does that help us really focus and bring that totality to what we need? Ultimately, we wanna make sure that we are focusing in on what next and making sure that we're leaving any conversation with clarity around what next. So I've just talked through the different content, but as you can see, the different content of the remote team builders co content actually reflects what we're doing in any team meeting in any team practice, et cetera. So wanted to share with you some very practical things that you might be able to incorporate as an opener, a closer, or when you're having teams come together. And the first one is appreciations. Uh, you know, we don't always take time to say thank you. In the remote space, we are all, uh, certainly in 2020 at least, during times of pandemic, it's been a lot of change, it's been a lot of fluctuation, and we do want to make sure that we're leaving the space and time for appreciations. Are we saying thanks? Are we focusing in on um, acknowledging what we see as strengths in others and how they're showing up? If you haven't taken time recently to get people to say thank you to each other or connect in in smaller breakout rooms, now is a time and a great opportunity for you to do so. Recently, in the Remote Pathways community, over at our podcast, we talked about the eight layers of remote work. So we can say thank you, but one of the appreciations really stems from the fact that we're all working on different layers. So I thought it might be useful to just share more on this. For those that are interested, head on over as well to my YouTube channel, and you can take a look at the first September 2020 call, which I've termed eight layers of remote work. What is interesting is sort of this whole notion of multiple layers in remote work. Again, as the world went remote earlier this year, it was like, we're all working remote. But in fact, there's multiple, multiple layers here. And the first one is that there's many pathways to the digital space. One of the reasons why I call remote pathways such is that we all have different adventures in the remote space. And in fact, Remote Pathways came out of a book I wrote last summer, which really highlights the experiences of 12 different remote workers coming together for a mastermind. So what are you doing as you move forward with the digital space? Secondary is decisions. What are we doing to make and take different decisions? What's interesting, if you think about ourselves being part of a team, and let's imagine the digital dozen who you see uh, pictured here are part of a team. We're all making different decisions at different times. So I might make a decision which pulls me off this pathway. Sujit, my colleague who's a project manager, might be taking his, making a decision that takes him out this way. We might think that we're going out this way, and perhaps we do for a while, but then maybe a team meeting brings us back together. And because we've traveled those different pathways, how do we now share that learning? Are we leaving space to help share that learning as we go? 
it's another layer. And again, for those that are new, or you might be wondering, okay, well, that's a lot. It's pretty deep. But you know, for those of us that really are um, looking and have been working this way, how do we help people make better decisions and connect the dots? Everything we do on a remote team, we want to bring it back to what's our common ground, what's our common experience. And that's going to help us with decision making and also delegation and figuring out what we are going to design. Design is key and visual design is key. It really, we need to all have that shared roadmap. And if I'm working on the upper corner of a blueprint, I might not see what's happening on the bottom corner of the blueprint. So part of Remote Pathways is about seeing the big picture of design, making sure we know what area we're focusing on. As we know more about the team, our strengths and our abilities, which we can only get to by dialogue, that's then going to help us figure out what are we doing and what might we need to delegate. We can't do it all. And many have been looking and trying in the last several months to do everything. Be in the role that you had pre-COVID that might have shifted dramatically. Be a leader, run a business, be a parent, be a caretaker, while maybe you're not feeling well as well. And so many of us have had to learn how to delegate more efficiently in order to keep things running. And I put myself in that category. Some of you know that early on in the pandemic back in April and May, I started feeling unwell. And while I kept things moving, I really had to lean into my team in order to do that. And we're going to continue to grow as the to-do list and the to-dos of many teams and leaders that we support is continuing to grow. So think about how delegation and doing is important for you, as are the distractions. What are the distractions that you're facing right now? What are the things that have become really ineffective? This month, September, it's all about getting back into routine. And while this may not be the September routine we're used to, and while it may change again, what are we doing to really focus in on that high impact work that is so important? It's that high impact that's gonna allow us to go into the depths that we need to go into to do our best work. So I've done a very quick high level overview, but part of remote team boosters is making sure that we're always on the same page. Like that seven C's, the seven different areas, these are areas that you might find actually could be looked at, could be explored more deeply to see if there is a disconnect within your team. So I'm gonna pause here. I wanna layer back again. We've looked at appreciations. We've also looked at different ways to get teams boosting. At its core, teams need to know each other, trust each other, and have clarity around results. That's why with remote team builders, we start with the enablers. What are those levers you can move? What are the things that you could be doing to create connection? And what are you doing as well to make sure that you are clear on your goals? We also want to make sure that we are leveraging our strengths so that people can really bring and partner in the best way possible. Keep in mind, if our partnerships are too similar, it's not going to be valuable. And that's where doing extended work around styles can be of great impact. So this leads us then to one specific type of work, which of course is co-working. And in the co-working space, you might say, but wait, we can't physically come together. So I think I should have labeled this co-working virtually. Um, one of the things that I love in my work is that co-working can take many forms and has taken many forms virtually. So a couple of things that I wanna invite you to, some are paid, some are free. I'll start with the free ones the five day challenges. My next five day challenge is gonna be coming up in October. It will be related to this topic of teams and virtual, so stay tuned about it. But it is an opportunity for you to come together, be in community with others. And while we may not co-work, although perhaps there'll be a special co-working session, stay tuned. Um, five day challenges are a great way to really like take action, do things and keep moving. One of my favorite virtual retreat processes, which is really a co-working session, is a plan to track virtual retreat. And I'll be hosting more of these as we get into our planning cycles for 2021. Plan to track is, of course, my workbook planner for remote and virtual professionals. And it's been amazing to see so many people picking up physical copies or going over to our website at potentialsrealized.com, heading to the store, 
and picking up a digital copy of this book. The digital copies are not available on Amazon, but you can head on over to Plan Do Track or you can head on over to Potentials Realized as well. It's great to talk about all these ideas and you might be saying, well, Jan, that's great, but I wanna build up my own. So here's what you can do. Join me for some one-on-one -on -one coaching or a VIP strategy day. Over the last three to four months, especially, I've been doing so much more work with coaches individually and as part of teams who are building out their own programs. In fact, last week, I hosted the Standout Virtually Studio Day. It was met with such great success. There will be more coming your way, maybe twice or three times a year. Annually, we do also offer the lab programs, and those meet bi-weekly on a Friday. There's a learning lab and design studio, which is all about learning, and there's also the Coaching Biz Growth Lab, which will take a new form into a remote growth lab for 2021. With that, episode 21, back to co-working and all these different forms, because each one of these is a different form of co-working, collaborating, and doing things real time. Co-working in its purest sense, as we explore, is really about getting things done. And recently, my co podcast co-host and I, Michelle Mullins, had a conversation last Thursday as part of our community call. Ch episode 21 goes into greater depth into different ways of co-working, whether we're doing a virtual retreat, whether we're doing a get it done day, whether we're simply hanging out with a colleague. Maybe we're doing a mastermind. All of these are helping us focus and get the results that we want. Again, back to some of those layers of remote work. If you know that distractions are key, maybe you look to create a co-working experience where it's gonna help you keep focused. As Michelle and I explore in last week's, I think it was September 17th, co-working, virtual co-working session, I'd like you to think about what type of virtual co-working structures work best for you. Is it a Zoom call where you're all live, where you're working real time? Is it a virtual retreat where you could do something more on a personal level, as Michelle talks about, or you could do something more on the business level as I take people through? You might also attend a lunch and learn. And last week I was talking to a group of about 160 professionals. Really, it was an opportunity for them to come together and connect. And while we couldn't use breakouts because of the room size, it was an opportunity for people to, sh to share across the, learn the learning spectrum. So lunch and learns are just as important as is some of that social time. And for us in Canada, we're coming up to Thanksgiving in a few weeks. I'm pretty confident that we will not be hosting Thanksgiving this year. We're gonna do something as a family virtually to have a bit of that social time, maybe do some games so that we can really focus in on what's important. As I shared, another whole different type of co-working structure could be doing some design time, having some studio time, taking people through a process where they can actually leave the day with something. And in design, design is really becoming a critical skill set for our world of virtual work today. Now, a simple co-working structure is just bringing people together for conversation. When did you last have space and place for a live, open conversation? That can be very different than some of the gamification and some of the challenges that we're seeing, but it will allow us to get things done. And ultimately, that's key. Teams, finally, a final layer of co-working is teams. And if you are a member of a team or part of a team, we know from research that several years ago, 2016, the Culture Wizard survey found that only one in four, less than one in four, 22% of remote teams actually focused in on getting to know each other. So team time is key. And what are you doing to make it fun, make it impactful, and make it valuable? Co-working can take many forms, and at all stages of our career, we need it, whether we're running solo or whether we're part of a team, whether we need a little boost or we need a little focus. What's going to shake things up? And I think creating some disruption, not in our world, but disruption in our schedule can help us really focus in more. So a second exercise I wanted to share with you as a remote team booster, whether you bring it into co-working, whether you bring it into team meetings or communication, is an exercise around my favorite. My favorite 
my favorite flower is, my favorite place to visit, my favorite food is, my favorite recipe to cook, my favorite blank, blank, blank. This is an exercise like you see on the screen, you could just use annotation and it's an opportunity to really be getting people into their favorite spots. So what's gonna help you boost things as a team? A final one that I wanted to share was a bingo. And this is something Michelle and I created with Remote Pathways. So every month we host two community calls. The first Thursday of every month, it's at 7 to 7.30 a.m. Eastern, drop into the Zoom room. Or second, uh, second call of the month is the third Thursday from 7.30 to 8 a.m. What I like about it is we bring a different exercise and something for people to do. So we did this Let's Play Bingo a while ago and it really was a way for people to like experiment. So we found out who loves to cook, who likes to go to bed early, who has experienced Zoom fatigue, et cetera. With the bingo, think through how that can really create some new insights in terms of how you operate. I'd invite you to just think right now how you could create your own bingo board and use it as a quick energizer into your work. All right, so Remote Team Builders is live and it's been exciting to see dozens of you taking the course in recent months. Again, we go into the seven C's that I dip, touched on today. We go into openers, collaborators, we touch on styles. For those that are leading team meetings or wanting a toolkit, this is a great starting point because it does allow you to build out some of those remote team tools. So with that, I hope that you found this useful. My invite is, What's the thing that's going to help you co-work better or collaborate better in the remote space? I hope that you'll consider maybe joining me this fall for an upcoming program, perhaps also that five-day challenge that's coming up soon. And here's where you can find out more. You can reach out to me and say, Jen, I want to learn more about that five-day challenge. You can do that by emailing me, jennifer at potentialsrealized.com or simply head on over to standoutvirtually.com and you'll see a sign up for the new challenge list. It is going to be about virtual. It's likely to be about teams. I hope that you will join me in thinking about and taking action on some work around virtual teams. Coworking is key. These layers of remote work are key, as are the enablers. What are we doing to build out all of these different areas. And with that, thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this, please share with others. Also, if you enjoyed us, be sure to pick up either a copy of the remote, white, the remote working white paper, which you'll see at any of the websites, or also check it out, um, check out the Remote Pathways podcast. Thanks for spending 15, 20 minutes with us today. My pleasure to be here. Have a good one and a great September. Be well.